Hey guys, what's up? It's Ripe again. In today's video, my stepmom tried to steal my inheritance from me and even tried to sue me to destroy my life and take my money. Here is what happened. Let's dive right into the video. And the first one is titled A Crap Storm at the Airport. While rushing to catch my flight at O'Hare International Airport last week, I saw this lady whose poodle was busy taking a dump right in the middle of the terminal. The oblivious owner, Jessica, was loudly chatting away on her phone with her back turned to the mess her dog was making. Excuse me, ma'am? This guy said politely, trying to get her attention. Jessica just glared at him. Your dog? The man continued meekly, pointing at the poodle mid-squad. Jessica rolled her eyes hard and went right back to her call, acting like the guy was not even there. The poor dude just slinked away, looking super embarrassed. Some people are just so freaking rude. Jessica yelled into her phone with zero self-awareness. Once her pooch finished unloading, Jessica simply started walking away, leaving the fresh pile of poop right there on the floor. Another woman stopped her in shock. Aren't you trying to clean that up? The woman asked incredulously. That's what they pay people for, Jessica replied dismissively before disappearing into the crowd still loudly rambling on her phone. I stood near the doggy deposit warning travelers to be careful and steer clear while someone alerted an airport worker. Nobody said a word, we were all just stunned that somebody could be such an inconsiderate jerk. Of course, when I got to the gate, Jessica and her now barking poodle were also there, waiting for the same San Francisco flight as me. Just great. Look, I get it, people need to travel with pets sometimes. But it is a privilege, one I take really seriously whenever I fly with my dog Buddy. He's extremely well behaved and does not make a scene. He sure as heck does not poop wherever he wants like a wild animal. Speaking of wild animals, there are designated pet relief areas right there in Ohare, just one terminal over from where the pooper intendant let her dog go. Not that it would have mattered to her, she gave zero craps about basic decency, no pun intended I guess, and picking up after her pet. While her furry little noisemaker was barking up a storm, Jessica had moved from her phone call to blasting music through her crappy phone speaker with no headphones on. I don't like making armchair psychological assessments, but this lady's behavior went so far beyond just being rude and entitled, it was like she got a sick kick out of annoying and inconveniencing everyone around her. Most people tried their best to tune Jessica out, giving her and her mutt a wide berth. Not me though, I'm a petty guy and this chick had it coming. Hey, you headed to Seattle for work? I said as I plopped down right next to the dreadful woman. San Francisco actually. She grumbled, clearly pissed that I interrupted her crappy concert. Oh man, my bad. You better book it then. They just switched that flight to gate 57B. This is the Seattle line now. I didn't mean for her to actually fall for my little FIB, but that's exactly what happened. Without a second thought, she scooped up all her crap and her dog and went storming off in a half. Jessica was so self-absorbed and oblivious, she didn't even think to double-check the gate info or departure details. Based on her reaction, she 100% bought my lie about the gate change, so she is also straight up rude for not even saying thanks before dashing off. Yeah, some people are really just incredible douchebags, I thought as I watched her angry power walk towards the completely wrong terminal. The San Francisco flight was actually scheduled to leave from gate 72C on the opposite side of the airport from where I sent her. I felt a twinge of guilt imagining her undoubtedly chewing out some innocent gate agent about the made up 57B gate. But then I remembered the whole taking a dump in the airport incident and that guilt went out of the window. I'm not sure if she ever figured out the truth and made it back for our original boarding time or not. I did not see Miss Poops a lot board the plane, so I didn't hear any yapping dogs on the flight either. Her potentially missing it due to my stupid prank would be some sweet sweet karma for how belligerent and awful she was to every single person she encountered. The one thing that does make me wonder if I took the revenge prank too far is the fact that United only runs one direct San Francisco flight out of O'Hare each day. Oops, my bad I guess. I'm sure they have people who can help her rebook with another airline. Assuming she doesn't take a dump on their counter first. And yeah, ripe stars, I'm curious. Do you think OP was being the a-hole in the story or did he do the right thing? Let me know in the comments. And the next one is the title story. It is titled, Stepmom tried to steal my $1 million inheritance, so I made her homeless. Sorry for the long post in advance, but I think that you will enjoy me going into some details with this one. 
And I will do my best to keep things easy to follow. I grew up not really knowing the financial situation that my family was in. I knew we had some money, but we did not live in some huge house and I did not really get spoiled with too many things. When I did, it was usually my grandparents or a special occasion like Christmas. I got an allowance but still had to do chores around the house in order to get it. Basically, I had zero idea that my family was sitting on a million dollars, but I was also happy that I didn't know. I was the type of dumb kind that would have run around bragging that I was a millionaire and then got laughed at when I didn't have the newest gaming system or toy. Things were pretty normal for me until I was 14 years old and my dad got remarried. Now, I did not know much about my mom because I was only two years old when she had died. My dad dated, but I guess raising me and working full time just made it hard for him. When I was 12, he met this woman and things started off fine and normal. I met her after a few months and she was nice to me. After a year and a half, when I was 14, they decided to get married and boom, I had a stepmom for the first time in my life. It wasn't until after the marriage that I started to see a different side of her that I did not like at all. When my dad was around, she played the role of acting nice to both of us, but when dad was working and I was alone with her, she would be nasty to me. If I was in a living room and she came in, she would kick me out so she could have the couch and TV to herself. She would sometimes order in food for dinner instead of cooking and not bother to get me anything. When I heard her ordering pizza once and asked for some too, she told me that if I wanted some, I had to pay for it. It really struck me as odd and I just wanted to avoid her. I know that the smart thing would have been to tell my dad, but he was so happy with her, I knew that she treated him great and I had basically taken most of his good years raising me. I did not want to start trouble, so I just started to stay out of her way when my dad was not around. And yes, for those wondering when she would buy food, it would always be with his money. Not her own, actually, about three months after they got married, she quit her job and just hung around the house full time. Which I get parents doing when they want to raise kids and take care of the house. She didn't do any of that though, because I was old enough to take care of myself and we had a cleaning lady come twice a month, so she was not cleaning either. Around that same age, I remember my dad sitting me down and wanting to talk to me about his parents. They had both passed away years before, so I did not know why he was bringing them up at first. He explained to me that they were in the jewelry business and had made some very smart investments during their life. My dad was their only son and inherited everything that they had. He told me that in his room there was a safe with papers, just in case anything happened to him. Namely, a will and information about an account where my dad had put the money away since he was successful on his own and did not need it. When I was 16, I found out why he had sat me down and told me all of this. He had been diagnosed with cancer and didn't want to tell and upset me about it before he had to. He had a tumor that was too dangerous to remove so they could only give him chemo and hope for the best. And the best did not work with my dad passing away that same year. Now, it was only my stepbrother and myself living in the house and I remembered what my dad had told me. I felt weird with her being around when I did, so I waited until she went out with her friends to go into the room and look at the safe. The paperwork was long and confusing, but luckily there was the number of a lawyer. I called him and told him who I was and that my dad had passed away. He told me that I had to come in to discuss all of this, but since I was a minor, I needed an adult with me. Meaning my stepmother. So I bit the bullet and told her that I found the will and we had to go and speak to the lawyer. She tried to insist on going alone, but I demanded getting to go and after a lot of fighting, we were both sitting in his office going over the papers. A lot of it was boring, but there were basically two things of importance from the will. The first being that the account with the inheritance was being transferred in my name as it was left solely to me. It was at that point that both of us found out that it was a million dollars. But I will get back to that in just a second. The other thing was the house since that was a big asset. My stepmother's name was on the deed, so she got that and I could not really fight for that. As for the money, I swore I could see the dollar bill sign light up in her eyes. At the same time, scowling at me like I had planned this the entire time. Stepmom, you cannot seriously just give a 16 year old a million dollars. There must be something wrong with the will. Lawyer, well, hold on for a second, there's a lot of fine print for this kind of thing. Until he is 18, he cannot access any of the money. Instead, a legal guardian will be appointed to be on the account. Stepmom, so I can put my name on it. I felt my stomach drop knowing that it would all be gone if she had a hold of it. Lawyer, there are two things. First of all, you never legally adopted him and I can send it paperwork and get a judge to sign off on that fairly easily though. 
The second is while yes your name is gonna be on it, the money still cannot be accessed. Your name would be on it more of a placeholder. Stepmom, if there's no money, then I don't see why I should spend it to keep him around. He's not mine after all. Without the money being accessible to her, she wanted nothing to do with me. And since I was a minor, I had two choices. If I couldn't stay with her and I had no other family, either I would go into a group home slash foster home or being emancipated. I did not feel ready to take care of myself yet and follow the huge list of guidelines being emancipated required of me, so I opted for the first option. I was a millionaire living in a group home with a bunch of boys that had been in and out of the system for their entire lives. It was rough and part of me couldn't believe that she had just dumped me and got to take the house that I grew up in. The house that I had known longer than her and my dad would have wanted me staying in. I spent my entire year and a half before I aged out bitter and angry at her. Once I was 18 and signed the papers, I had the money and could do anything that I wanted. However, I had to be careful of course because even that much money is liable to get wasted away. Luckily, I had a friend whose mom was an accountant and she helped me manage the money and put it into the right kind of bank account and all of that. I opted to get an apartment near a state college that I had good enough grades to go to. Still, I had that gnawing feeling in the back of my mind that I had to see what my stepmom was now going through. Sure, she got the house but none of the money to keep payments up on it. I wanted to also act like a cocky jerk so I went out and bought myself a pretty expensive suit to go and visit her in. To just rub salt in the wound. And guys, it took almost two years but the wait was almost worth it once I saw the sad state that she was in. The house was a mess even from the outside. The paint was cracking, the lawn was dead and the car in the driveway had four flat tires. I knocked on the door and she answered the door clearly either hungover or already drunk at 11am. She didn't recognize me at first but boy, when she did she got that same angry look in her eyes as the last day I saw her. Stepmom, what the hell are you doing here? I told the state to put you in the system and keep you there. I'm not adopting you so you take your stupid thrift store suit and get away. Me, actually I came because I'm 18 now, wanted to stop by and see how you are. Her face and tone changed. Stepmom, oh, why don't you come in and have a seat? I've actually been hoping you would come by and talk with me. I knew this look and act because it was the same one she had used on my dad. I decided to go along with it for my own amusement and see where it led. Stepmom, it was so hard for me to give you up a couple years ago. I just wasn't in a good place to take care of a teenage boy. I mean, I don't know anything about them. It really does feel nice and right to have you here with me again. Me, it's nice to be back in my old house. The inside of the house looked worse than the outside and it smelled so bad I could gag. It had no care put into it clearly. Stepmom, so whatever happened to that account your dad left you? It had a few thousand in it. Are you gonna use it for college? You can always move back in here and have cheaper rent than in the city. Me, we both know that it had a lot more than that in it. Stepmom, you know I was married to him, so really, I should get some of that money. The house might get taken away because I don't have money. You wouldn't want to see some strangers living in your house. I helped take care of you for years and got nothing, so maybe just help your old mom out. Me, first of all, you're not my mom. You are barely my stepmom and I call you that because calling you the BITCH my dad married would not go over so well. I came by to just confirm that you're the same person that you are then. You don't deserve to live in this house. I left and somehow she got my number and email and started messaging me and asking for money and all that crap. What she didn't realize was all the information she was giving me about the house being foreclosed on meant that I knew exactly when and where to go in order to see the auction happen for the house. I went and watched as I saw her in the corner with a few friends in what I guess was an attempt to get the house back. Things started and she was placing bets on the house, I had way too much fun raising the price and making it too far out of her reach. Locking eyes with her as I finally won the house from the auction. Now I honestly didn't plan what I was going to do with the house once I got it. I was 18 with money and just going off impulse to spite this woman. Not to mention I got it for a lot cheaper than it was worth so I knew I would not end up at a total loss. I had to hire a company to come in and deep clean the house as it was horrible and disgusting. Almost all the furniture had to get thrown away and I was left with a blank slate of my house. Now clean and looking more like I remembered it, but oh, this was not the end of hearing from my stepmom because she managed to find the perfect time to show up and see me at the house as I was giving it a final look after the cleaning was done. 
Stepmom, wow, you did so good at that auction. This time I was not gonna try and play around with her though. I was done with all of that and wanted her out of my life for good. Me, you can stop pretending to be nice. I'm not letting you live in my house, let's be clear here. Stepmom, your dad put my name on the deed because he wanted me to have it. Me, and you did a great job of not paying the mortgage and turning it into a dump. The house has a single name on it now, and that is mine. And if you try and come in, I'll call the cops on you so fast your head will spin. She was pissed, and instead of just leaving things alone, she decided to file a lawsuit against me for the very familiar sounding $1 million. She was now, after all of this, claiming that I'd faked the will years ago in order to get the money in my name. And that as a spouse of the deceased, all legal assets legally should have been transferred to her instead. It was a crazy lawsuit because it was clear she just wanted to try and steal my money. The will was legal and done with the help of a lawyer. One who was told all of the information before my dad had passed away. It was not possible for me to magically alter a will that had been filed with the state when I was only 12 years old. She poured so much money into a dumb lawsuit, which would be funny in a second. Obviously, she did not get awarded at anything, but I filed harassment charges against her, showing the dozens of texts and emails begging and demanding money from me over the last couple of months alone. She was told that she had to stay away from me and not contact me again or she could be arrested. With all of her money going towards suing me, she no longer had any left to find a place to live. I could not have imagined a better ending happening for her except maybe going to jail or something crazy. The last that I heard, she was living in a shelter while failing to find a job. A situation that for anybody else, I would feel bad for them and want to help them. For her though, it felt like perfect karma to become homeless after basically making a 16 year old lose his home first. Just because I know I'll get comments asking about the house, I made the decision to sell it after I fixed it up and did some remodeling. I made a profit and while it was cool, I don't think house flipper is gonna be a career for me. I'm still in college and leaning towards a degree in accounting. I only took the courses at first to help myself understand my money better, but it turns out I like it. Hopefully I can make something of myself and never hear from that god awful woman again. And yeah, ripe stars, I gotta say, that was a crazy revenge story and please let me know in the comments whether you would have acted the same as OP if you were in his shoes or do you think that he went too far? Let me know what you think in the comments. And now let's move on to the next story. It starts like this. So I had just started a new job and I was in a training class with this woman. I was 30 but had been in school for ages so I was a bit naive and this woman was not much older than me but had 3 or 4 kids. Sorry my memory is going. I started a friendship with her and we were hanging out on breaks. She is telling me all these crazy stories about her time as an army wife, her youth in Utah and being removed from her parents, foster care, all this stuff etc. Now I don't think much of this because I had a rough childhood too and went to school with some sisters that had it even worse so nothing she said really tripped my senses. My dad had crazy stories from his youth as well and though he exaggerates a bit, they are still true. So all this stuff keeps happening to her, her husband kicks her out, lets her back in, she gets involved in a cult and is trying to break away, this guy from the cult is stalking her, she has seizures at work and has to leave in an ambulance a couple of times and it turns out that she is involved in this court case because this serial assaulter was caught and she is testifying against him because she was a victim too. Finally she has one more seizure at work and she is eyeballing me like a kid looking to see if mommy is watching his tantrum while everyone gawks and I just say to myself, she is faking it. She is completely faking it. I was a long time babysitter and she looks like a kid faking a serious emotional outburst to a parent trying to get off easy for something. Then one day I go to her house and another friend is helping her clean it and I find out he is her ex. The guy does not even say any more than that. She told us that he was going to throw her out because she was slacking as the wife and not doing the chores. Then a few weeks later she is on leave for falling down the stairs. At this point I'm feeling things are completely sus. It's just too many crazy stories, I've been having anxiety attacks worrying about her and her kids safety so I get this wild hair to look her up on the internet. This is 2000, a few people have AOL but not many people are familiar with the internet. Now the internet was really different back then, most of it was academic info being shared. All of the major universities shared papers online and many of the science journals and some news outlets, especially the Salt Lake Tribune. I do a search on her because after all the crazy stuff she said, maybe there's something on her. 
and jackpot. She lied about being assaulted and got this guy put in jail. He had just been freed a year or so prior and they had a big article. Had to pay your fee to get the whole thing but yeah, she is a pathological liar and has spent her entire adulthood lying about everything. So I print out the article and give it to the other co-worker and she is blown away and pissed beyond belief. Honest co-worker gives HR a copy of the article because Laia said that she injured her shoulder falling down the stairs, the same injury she claims she received in both assault cases in the past. The fallout my employer gives the liar, a settlement of a small amount of money, I heard less than 5000 if she will quit, drop her case against them for the shoulder injury and never be heard from again. My other co-worker found out that she had injured her shoulder as a kid and it was a lifetime injury. Her husband had divorced her because she was a liar and she had an affair and had an affair baby while they were married. He got custody of that kid during the divorce, she asked to move in with him and the kids doing the housework in return for rent. She was not ever holding up her end of the bargain, he did not really want to do it but he wanted the kids to be able to see her because they missed her. He never told us anything because he figured we would not believe him after all the lies she had said. It turns out the cult people were just a nice small church group and she had lied to them that all of us were using and abusing her and they were trying to rescue her from us while we thought we were trying to rescue her from them. I ended up telling her I never wanted to see her again and I never heard another thing about her ever again. Now her name is too common and I haven't had any luck finding any more internet dirt on her. So yeah, that was the craziest coworker I've ever had. I'll have a crazy roommate story for you when I feel up to typing that out. And yeah guys, if you cannot get enough of my content, please don't forget to check out my podcast by searching for Ripe Stories on all major podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple or Google Podcasts. Furthermore, you can find bonus content by going to patreon.com slash ripe YouTube or by clicking the join button here on YouTube. For a small monthly fee, you will get access to dozens and dozens of exclusive videos you won't find anywhere else. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again tomorrow.